In the last step, we merged our Deadpool. So we had many layers and we merged it down uh, to just the one model. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rename this la layer for a second here. All right, so we've got our merged model. Um, and before we export, there is one issue I've ran into. After you merge, before you export the model from Medium to 3D print it, in that all of our separate layers were just merged into one model. Now, if there was overlap, that can cause some problems. And uh, I'm going to have a picture on this video that will show what that can look like on the printed model. And I'm going to show you how to fix this. Uh, I believe it was Thies or Thies on Oculus Medium Artists uh, Facebook group that shared this with me. Thank you so much, man. I would not have figured this out on my own. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make Deadpool bigger and actually go inside of the model. Once we're inside, I'm gonna intentionally do this step just to show you what the problem is. If we have a negative space in the model, I just use the subtraction tool um, instead of the add tool. So the add tool is green, subtraction is red, and I subtracted space within our merged model. And you can see that medium actually creates this sphere inside the model. The problem with that is when we export it, and we go to slice it with our printer slicer software. It's going to interpret this as a space that you either want to print or not don't want printed. I've seen it kind of go either way. I'm not sure why, but either way, it produces results we don't want. If it's right dead center in your model and it thinks it should fill in the space, it's going to spend more time filling that space in while it's printing. You're not going to see it. Um, but it's just going to waste time and film it. And then the other way it can show itself is let's say the model is 90% finished and you missed a little thing inside the model up near the face. And all of a sudden you have this hole in your perfect model. So let me show you how to fix this. We're going to go inside the model. Okay. Make him larger. It makes it easier to find these issues. And just do the sphere brush, change it to additive, and just fill in any anomalies you see. Um, this is caused, I believe, because of the, uh, the voxel technology that uh, Medium uses to create the models. And, you know, it's, it's not that hard of a thing to fix. It's just something to be aware of if you are going to be 3D printing your model. So I'm going to switch to a random color here that isn't the same color as Deadpool, and I'll show you why. As I'm making these corrections, um, one trick I like to use is go inside the model, and I'm holding down the grip button this whole time on my offhand, um, and then I'll just come back outside the model so I can go in and out really fast. And let's say I'm fixing what I think is an issue but I accidentally go outside the model. Well, because I've chose just some other random color besides red, it's easy to identify where I've tried to make these corrections and see if I made a mistake. So I'm gonna undo that. It looks like this one I can just fix by uh, doing a little smooth here. So you will see that too, little paper like tears, and you can fix those with either the smooth tool or the inflate tool if it's a larger um, gap on the model. So I just go around within the model and just look for little anomalies like that that were created by that merge process. So I'm gonna just uh, do that now and then um, I'm gonna fast forward the video and then we'll pick up from there. You can also take the time to uh, you know, fix little issues like this. Um, you know, this, I have him uh, enlarged so much. I mean, some of this stuff wouldn't even show up on the print depending on the size uh, you print him out at. So I guess let's talk about that as well. 
when you're uh, 3D printing um, or modeling for 3D printing, keep that in mind too. How big is the model going to be when you print it? Um, when, when you're thinking about that, uh, you might not want to put in a ton of wrinkles, minor wrinkles and stuff. If you're going to print them out at one inch tall, that stuff's probably not going to show up on the print. Um, if you're doing a larger model, though, um, you know, one that's 100 millimeters tall, let's say, um, those details are going to show up. So pack them in. But I guess just don't waste your time on a lot of nitpicky details if you're planning on doing like miniatures or something like that. So again, just going around, um, cleaning up any of these issues I see. And it's worth it because you don't want to have a huge print and then have an issue at the very last second. You can see here I had overlap and that just created these little oddball things. Um, so you can have little spots that poke through. Just hit them with a the smooth once and that'll clear them up. All right, I'm gonna go down and check the base. I have seem to have a lot of issues with the base, just depending on um, you know, like here I let the uh, bottom of the model poke through uh, the base, so I'll just clean that up real quick. And if you want nice bottom layers, pay special attention when you do the uh, when you do the base. Like get down here and make sure everything looks really good. Always nice to have that nice clean. Uh, base for your end model all right i'm going to call that good i think it's good so we're going to uh go to the next step which is export so everything's good to go i've done all the cleanup i'm going to go ahead and save this because i am pretty much ready to go so um we'll get it saved and then that way if we ever have to you know come back and re-export it we can all right so after I got it saved, I'm going to go to File on the File menu and hit Export. And when this menu comes up, I've been leaving mine at 100%. That's working for me. I know that keeps 100% uh, of the detail that I'm seeing in Medium. It's quite possible you could um, lower this down. Um, I haven't tested it. I'm not dealing with having to send files to people. You know, I'm doing all the printing myself. So for me, this is working. I imagine you would just have to play around with that and see if you could get away with less. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit export. Um, you'll be prompted with where to put the file. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it on my desktop. And hit enter. And then on this menu, just hit the export button. And you're gonna get this decimating geometry uh, screen. Um, it doesn't take very long at all. So at this point, um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video. Um, what's going to happen? We're going to have an OBJ file um, on my desk, and we're going to we're going to pull that into Simplify 3D. And look, before I even finish talking, it's already exported. Super impressive.